about the one that God has delivered him from that accident. I'm talking about the one that God has delivered you from that sickness. Come on. If you are here and God has done something for you, lift up your voice and give him glory. The one you serve, we worship you. We give you glory, God. Hey. The one you serve. Hey. You have come to worship the Lord this morning. You have come to bow before him, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The I am that I am, the ancient of days, the maker of the heavens and the earth. I want you to worship the Lord this morning. Just exalt the name of the Lord this morning in your own words. Just praise the name of the Lord this morning in your own words. Father, we thank you. We bow before you, Lord. We cast our crowns before you this morning. We join the hosts of the angels of heaven, Lord. And we say that, Lord, we magnify your holy name. Be glorified this morning. Be glorified this morning. For indeed you are God. Thank you, Jesus. Put your hands together and bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Worship you, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we take our seats in heavenly places in Christ Jesus? You are welcome to church this morning. This is a wonderful day that the Lord has made. It is not like yesterday. It is a new day. It comes with its blessings. Hallelujah. And so if you are here this morning, I want you to see it as a privilege to come before the Lord. Because it is not everybody that had this opportunity. Hallelujah. And I don't want you to take it for granted. And so you are welcome to Victory Bible Church Dominion Sanctuary the headquarters of all Victory Bible Churches International. Hallelujah. And I know that today you will receive a blessing. I was here this morning. And so if I tell you you will receive a blessing, I know what I'm talking about. By the time the service comes to an end, I know your life will not be the same again. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If today is the first time you are worshiping with us, we want to give you a victorious welcome. Hallelujah. And so if today is the first time you are worshiping with us, I want you to give me a wave. If you are worshiping with us for the first time, I want you to raise your hand and give me a wave. God richly bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Church, we have a lot to do. The joy and fulfillment of coming to church is not only to come and sit down and hear the word, but knowing that through you, somebody is saved. Hallelujah. And so we have a lot to do. I want to give about two people a real opportunity to be a blessing to somebody. You are here. God has done something for you. 
God has answered a prayer. God has responded to your call. And you want to encourage the brethren with what the Lord has done in your life. The Bible says that they overcame him. Hallelujah. By the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimonies. Today you want to overcome the enemy completely by the word of your testimony. You have a testimony there you want to share with the brethren. I want to give you the opportunity to come and share your testimony to the glory of the living God. Hallelujah. Is somebody coming? Somebody here to share a testimony? Thank you, Jesus. This morning, whilst the preaching was going on, the preacher said something which to me was very instructive. She was telling us about how God created Adam and when he came to creating Eve, he caused Adam to fall into a deep sleep. And what she was telling us was that God is the best surgeon. Hallelujah. And so it doesn't matter what you are going through, even if you are booked for surgery, God is the best surgeon and he's able to perform surgery on us. Hallelujah. And I was thinking about this and I was asking myself, what do surgeons do? Hallelujah. I have faced it before. Surgeons enter into the parts where the eyes cannot even see and they correct deformities. Hallelujah. So that you can be free. Today, you want to give the best surgeon the opportunity to enter into the parts of you that no man can even see and perform a miracle. Sometimes when we bring our offerings to the Lord, people don't know what you are going through to bring that offering. Some people would have wept in their rooms the whole night asking God what my children are going to eat. And yet you come to church and you come and give an offering. You need a surgeon who can enter into the path where men cannot see and come and answer your prayers, which no one can answer for you. Hallelujah. Today, God is here to answer that prayer. He needs a sacrifice from you. I want you to bring an offering today understanding one thing. That you are bringing a point of contact that will provoke God and say that this child of mine needs surgeon. This child needs a surgeon to perform a surgery on his or her case. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about your body. I am talking about the deep things that you cannot even share with anyone. Today, take your offering and let us pray. Jesus Christ, we bring our offering to you. Even out of our lack, we still bring to you, Lord, because we believe that you are able to perform miracles that no one can perform. Watch over this seed in our hands, Lord, and enter into the parts of us, O oh Lord, that no one can help us and offer us help. For we need you. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You are here, you are here. moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. 
noise for Jesus in this place. Uh, make some Holy Ghost crazy noise. Make some Holy Ghost crazy noise. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hey, the Bible says uh, in Mark chapter 16 verse 17 uh, that he has given us uh, the power to lay hand on the sick uh, and they shall be healed. Uh, and he has given us the power to lay hand uh, on the dead uh, and they shall come to life. Uh, if you believe that, uh, come and make some Holy Ghost crazy noise. Uh, hey! Papa Rosha Hanaman. Aposi Aman Agadose Henimiata. Come on. Hey. Come on. Hey. 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 Hey.
army is rising I won't take no for an answer And if we must have you Nothing less than all of you Listen An army is rising I won't take no for an answer And if we must have you Nothing less than all of you All of you We won't wait For you to come We are right where you are We'll just pray For all of you Nothing less than that We won't wait For you to come Jesus of our time. We are here to lay hands on 
the seeker to speak the word. Our generation, we shall praise your name. We shall praise. Lord, we are here this morning in one accord. Father, we pray and we declare this morning every sick man, every sick woman is receiving the healing this morning. Is receiving the healing this morning. Lord, for your word says that you are not giving them the spirit of fear, but you are giving them the power, power to lay hands on the seeker and let them be healer. Every sickness in this house is living this morning. Is living this morning. Is living this morning. Is living this morning. Come on, begin to speak in the spirit. Begin to speak in the spirit. Rika pala kaneya ta, akenya pala. Rika pala kadosha hanaba. Our generation shall praise your name. Lord, our generation, we shall praise your name. Your name is. Our generation shall praise your name. This is the army of our time. We are the army of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are here to lay hands on the sick. We are here to speak life to the dead. We are here to speak life to that situation. We are here for promotions that everything that is not working begins to work. We will wait for you for to you come. come. We are right where you are. We are desperate for all of you. Nothing less than that. Come on, say we won't wait. Sir. We will wait for you to come. We are right. Lord, we are desperate for you, Lord. We are desperate to have an encounter. Come on, make some joyful noise to the Lord Jesus. Make some joyful noise to the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our generation shall praise the Lord. Can, can you live that, that life for me? Our generation shall praise the name of the Lord. Our generation shall praise your name. Our generation shall praise, shall praise your name. Oh, our generation shall praise your name. Our Oh, Jesus, shall praise your 
We avail ourselves. We avail ourselves for your work, Jesus. Oh, we shall praise your name. Oh, our generation, our generation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I welcome you to church this morning. As you can see, people are trooping in gradually for service this morning. And I know that you are also preparing yourself in your room, in your living room, in your kitchen, wherever you are. The moment you are online with us, there's church happening in your place. I pray that God will meet you at the point of your need. And I pray that your life will never be the same again. This afternoon service will be one with a difference. It's a service that is going to be led and preached by our own mama, Lady Dora Takiya Boy. And she's going to be talking about healing, deliverance. And I know that she will meet you at the point of your need. I pray for you today that God will meet you and God will touch you. I also encourage you to share the link. Make sure you share this link for us so that many people will be rich with the word the same way you are going to hear it. God bless you so much. I welcome you to the auditorium. Amen. Results. Then those who partner the anointing can produce great results. And that is what we are going to experience this morning. This morning, I'm here to introduce to you the one who partners our papa. And she partners the anointing. Help me welcome Lady Reverend Mrs. Dora Takia Boy. Yeah. 
Can be found in Jeremiah 33 and verse 6. Jeremiah 33 and verse 6. It says, Behold, I will bring it. Behold, I will bring it. What? Help and kill. And I will kill them. And will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. This whole man. Bishop Ankoma started with us. The presiding bishop also took over. All about our divine heart. And this morning you are hearing from me. And it is the desire of Jehovah God to heal his people. He says, I will bring her and cure and I will heal them. This is what God has for his people. And so today being the last Sunday as we are talking, doesn't mean that after this Sunday we are not talking about health anymore. You are hearing the word such that anytime the enemy shows up in the area of health issues, you know how to face it and face him squarely. So we want to lift up our voices and say, Lord, I need my health now. Cure me now. If you cure them, Lord, it is my turn for me also to receive my divine help. Lift up your voice. Whilst they play the music coolly, prayerfully, lift up your voice and declare and decree that I will receive my healing totally. Lift up your voice right now. Yeah, we thank you, Lord. As we lift up our voices, O God, and we decree and we declare, O God, our desire. Yeah, 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 yeah. You said you will heal us. You will clear us, Papa, O God. Lord, let it be, let it be. Let it be, let it be, let it be. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah.
You said nobody enters into your house and never leave the same. Lord, may we never live the same. We are living with the change of story. Ah, the master healer. Thank you for your presence that is here in the name of Jesus. This morning, Lord, use me to be a blessing. Thank you, Lord. Use me to be a blessing. Shakaya Lobohatasafarianda. Hey, you are here. We give you glory. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody clap, shout. Unto the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Is that all you can do? Is that all you can do? Week after week, month after month, God has protected you. Is that all you can do? For the last time, you can do better. Shout, shout, make a joyful noise. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. You may now take your seat. Sit on your enemy. Hallelujah. Once again, I want to thank the presiding bishop for this opportunity to be a blessing. I don't take it for um, granted. You don't see him around because he has a very important um, appointment that he needs to attend to it. So, though he's not here, he's here with us. And this morning, I'm standing in his shoes to be a blessing unto you. Hallelujah. I have not come in my own anointing. I have come in the anointing of the presiding bishop. Amen. Small one, small one. Small anointing. Hallelujah. Amen. The first service, I know it was a blessing. And it will be a blessing unto you too in Jesus' name. Only fasten your seatbelt and let's take the word in Jesus' name. This morning, we into the afternoon, we are looking at... Um, a very important um, key areas regarding our divine health. One, engaging the word for divine health. Two, engaging the powerful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Psalm 119 verses 130, verse 130 has this to say. It says, the entrance of thy word giveth life. Light. It giveth understanding to the simple. The entrance of thy word giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. And this morning into the afternoon, I want to draw your attention that when it comes to our divine health or talking about healing and deliverance, for me, one important key is the word. It says that, the entrance of his word giveth light. So as I'm speaking to you right now, as you have heard from the ministers of God, you receive light. Anytime you hear the word, you receive light. Your eyes open, you receive light for your divine help. And this afternoon, at the sound of my voice, whatever you are going through, no matter your Challenges, issue of concerning when it regards to health. I pray in the name of Jesus that you receive your healing and you will never live here the same. He says in Ezekiel 2 2, he says that when he speak, then the spirit entered into me. Whilst he speak, the spirit enters into me. I pray that as you hear my voice, the spirit that gives light will enter into you and you will receive your divine help in the name of Jesus Christ. Psalm 107 verse 20 has this to say. He says he sent forth his word. He didn't say he sent forth his prayer. He sent forth his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. He sent forth his word. That is why I said the word of God plays a very important role. 
I always, um, this morning, I was telling them in miracle service, I, um, in the first service, that anytime I have the opportunity to minister at miracle service, first of all, I make them aware, you know, they come with the mind that I'm coming, uh, lay hands on me, anoint me, and pray for me. But I always draw the attention that, hey, first of all, listen to the word. And when you hear the word, you can receive your healing even before the ministers will lay hands on you. So this morning, if he sent forth his word, maybe you've heard bad news from the doctors. I mean, you, you are sick in any part of your body. Let the word that is coming from my mouth enter it into you and you will receive your healing in Jesus' mighty name. Let me hear your amen and let me hear your shouting and preach with me. Hallelujah. So this morning, the master is in the house. The healer is in the house. The great physician is in the house. And he's ready to heal you. He's held, ready to deliver in the name of Jesus. There is this powerful account in Mark chapter 2. From verse 1, it says, And again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was known that he was in the house, and straight away many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached what? Oh, let me hear you, people of God. We are more than 10 in this auditorium. He did what? He did what? So Jesus did not go straight with this multitude. You know, many of them going, laying hands, laying hands, laying hands. I'm not saying that it's not important. But I want you to, to draw your attention to something that the word of God is, is the key, is the key. When you receive it, nobody even will lay hands on you. There are times we need it, but hey, there are times you'll be alone. You find yourself in a situation. You don't know what to do. You can lay hands on yourself because of the word you have received. Let me hear your amen. amen. And it says that, and they come unto him, bringing one sick of palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let it down, the bed wherein the sick of palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto them, he said unto the sick of palsy, son, thy sins have made thee whole. So they heard the word, brethren. They heard the word of God. And that gingered their faith. They brought this man that was sick. They didn't know what to do because it was, the whole place was full up, crowded. So hearing the word from the master moved them. That is why they, 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 they moved by faith and said to themselves, well, we have heard the word. Let's move. And then they went all the way to where Jesus and they, I mean, who, 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 who told them to uncover the roof? That's a big question. It doesn't make sense, but it makes faith. Who asked them to uncover the roof? But the word that they heard Help them ginger their faith and say, no, whether, whatever, whatever, whatever we will do for him to be um, healed, we're going to do. So that's how come them this morning as to hear the sound of my voice. You are not on top of the roof. You are seated right here in front of me. He says they heard the word. They heard the word. He preached the word and they heard it and they moved. May you move and receive your healing. I don't care about what the doctors have said. Whose report do we believe? We believe the report of the living God. With God, with men, it is impossible. But with God, with God, with God, with God, all things are possible. In Proverbs 4, 20, 22, it says, listen to this powerful account. Proverbs 4, 20 to 22. It says, my son, my daughter, it means the same. Attend to my what? Attend to what? Incline thy ear unto my saying. 
saying, let not let them not depart from thy what? But do what? Keep them in the midst of thy what? Thy heart. For they are. I want to hear from you. They are. They are. Unto those that do what? And what? To their. What a powerful scripture. It says, keep the word. And that is the reason why most of the time when we come to church like this, we will praise, we will do everything. When it gets to the word, then the devil will come whispering. Oh, you've forgotten this in the house. Oh, uh, tomorrow I have to do this. Oh, um, this. So you are in the auditorium. But whilst the message is going on, your mind is something. You are not here crying. The devil knows it. That when you keep the word, not only of area of your health, but regards to other issues, you will conquer. So he will always find a way by which he will take the word out of you. But Bible makes us to understand we should keep it in the midst of our heart. Because one, it is what? Them that find the word. Is what is life to those that find the word and health to their flesh. That is why I said from the beginning, when you have the word, right, people of God, you don't need anybody to lay hands on you. Though it's necessary. Once you have it, you know, it says, keep the word in the midst of your heart. You wake up and then you find yourself sick somewhere. The pain is so serious, but then you, you take the word. It says, they that find the word, they that find the word. As I keep the word in my, in my spirit, it is life. It is life and it is health to my flesh. You confess it, you eat it, you drink it, you do everything to the word. And as you are confessing, as you are decreeing, as you are declaring, all of a sudden you find yourself walking in health. I pray in the name of Jesus that God will take you there. Keep the word. I asked them in church service, I said, how many of us, if I'm to ask right now, the scriptures you know about health will be fighting with it. But I pray that you will keep them. Because whether we like it or not, we have an enemy who will never sleep. Who will never, what? Sleep. And all his passion is a kill to destroy and to steal. So if you sleep, or the bayou, but I'm preaching that you will rise up and let the word of God be in your heart. Because it is life and it is health to your flesh. <laughs> hey! I'm preaching. And it is me a blessing to me too. And I know you are being blessed in Jesus' name. Because it is the word. Hallelujah. Quickly, in Matthew 8, verse 16 and 17, it says that, And when the eve was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. The devil is a liar. And he cast out the spirit with his way and heal all that were sick. He cast the spirit with his way. That it might be fulfilled, verse 17. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Azar, the prophet, saying himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. But he said, he cast out the devils, the spirits. Whether you like it or not, we have them worrying us day in and day out. You go to bed restful, you wake up fighting. Because your spirit's fighting with you day in and day out. You go to bed, bad dreams. Where are they coming from? Spirit, some of us, you know, you go to bed and then you, all of a sudden, you realize that it's like a dream. By the time you realize, you feel it, that somebody comes to sleep with you. It's a spirit to oppress and to depress you. 
But the Bible says that he cast them with his way. So when you wake up and you find yourself in that situation, you don't sit down and cross your leg and say, oh, 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 oh. Wake up. Wake up. Fight those spirits with the word because Jesus cast them out with what? The word. This is, you hear the presiding bishop talking with, you know, passion. He's so passionate about miracle service and people that he prayed with. Come and see things that happen. Pastor Anderson is here. Then you, when we talk, then you will realize when we talk about spirits, you will know what we are talking about. Fighting our young ladies. Things are not working. Sometimes you think, oh, it's, it's, it's just normal. By the time you realize there are spirits that are fighting. That I'll let her marry. I'll let her give birth. I'll let her go on. I'll give her work. You think it's jokes. But there are spirits that come in. But today, in the name of Jesus, on this exalted altar, any spirit, any spirit that will not allow you to have your rest, I stand in the name of Jesus and I decree and I declare, today mark the end of it. In the name of Jesus, any spirit, any spirit worry you in the name of Jesus, die in Jesus' name, die in Jesus' name, die in Jesus' name. is enough. Oh. Enough is enough. The things that happen in the spiritual realm, you have no idea. In fact, Bishop says we are ignorant and truly, truly, we are. So everything, you take it normal and then you relax. These days, it's no time for you to relax. Things are not going well, you relax. No! Fight it. Allow the word and deal with it. Quickly. I says God's word is, is loaded with healing virtues. God's word ha, is loaded with healing virtues. Luke 6, 17. And he came down with them and stood in the plain. And the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear what? Who came to do what? Which came to do what? I want, to, I, want to, I want you to get it. I want it to sink into your spirit. They came to do what? To hear him and to be what? No, 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 no. Let's go back. They came to do what? Yeah. And to be? So now you understand my message. How important the word is. They came to hear him. So anytime you come to church and the devil, the enemy, you know, whispers a lot of things in your mind. So that once you are here, your mind is quickly place him where he belongs to. Let him know that you are at church and you are receiving the word. Because as they receive the word, and as I'm speaking, and you are receiving the word, your healing is taking place. Last week, Bishop preached about mindset. And I realized, Bishop Ankoma, me myself, I realized that. And also for some, around the weekend, God designed it such that I, I, I got in touch with some people from Monday to, so even preparing this message, I was fighting. Because now you are meeting situations and you realize that mindset, you know, therefore, no, I am bonipa. It's wrong. Our mindset. If there is any number one healing that I'll cry, God should heal our mind. Because most of us, the whole, I've not said anything. And 
And even in the church, we need healing. That is why God said we should pray that he will heal our land. And they that were vexed with unclean spirit were healed. Then another powerful account that you are familiar with, Mark 5, 29, 25 to 29, I'm not going to read that one, but I want you to pay close attention to verse 27. It says that, and when she heard, that is a woman of, with the issue of blood. And when she heard of Jesus, she heard. She heard of Jesus. So she heard something. She heard the word about the miracles, about what Jesus is doing. She heard it and that moved her to come around into the midst of the people. She heard something. Get it. She heard the word. She did not hear negative words. She heard positive word. And Bible says that she has been sick for 12 solid years. Spent all her money on physician. It wasn't getting better. But when she heard, when she heard, no pastor said to her, go and touch Jesus, you'll be healed. But she said within herself that I know if I will go and press, no matter how the crowd is and whatever, if I'm able to press through, I know because of what I've heard about Jesus. I know, I know, I know. When I press, I will receive my healing. This morning, I don't care how long your situation has been. No matter what you are going through, if only you will receive your word and press through. If only you will receive the word and press through. Your situation will be over. Am I blessing you? Shakaya Bahatosti. The word is so important. And so I said, engaging the authority and the powerful name of Jesus. Why this? Because realizing that we are raising a generation or we have Christians that they come to church all right. I mean, the word is being preached and then we, we pray for people and then we say, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, go, in the name of Jesus, leave this person. But sometimes we don't even have clue. We don't understand it. If I'm to ask why the name you use, then we'll be struggling. But I want to call your attention that as a child of God, you have the right to use the name of Jesus because there is power, there is authority in the name of Jesus. And anytime at all, you can engage it and it will work for you. There is power. That's why he said, God said, I have given him a name which is above every name. And I said, the three service, listen to me. I said, names are very important. Names are very, very important. That's why God said to Adam, give names to all the things. Give name to all the things because names are very important. And I said, name is not only for identification. All that a person is, is in his name. <laughs> you and your name are one. Your name stands for you. That is why you need to carry yourself well. Bible says that a good name is better than riches. That's why somebody can be rich. They mention the person's name and it's like, who cares? Because you are rich but you don't have a good name. Mercy, may you never be that. You destroy a person's name, you destroy the person. That's why some families, I'm saying this so that you understand where I'm, I'm coming from and where I'm going. That's why some families, they boast and they are proud. Hey, we, our family, then don't mention their name. We, we don't take nonsense over. Our family, our family name. One time somebody was messing up and 
we were talking and I'm talk, I was talking to the lady and the lady said, anytime we meet and we are talking, all that they will be saying, we, our family, they don't spoil our name. But I've come into the family and I'm spoiling the family's name. <laughs> so you see how people cherish names? Well, names are very important. And so God said in Philippians 2, he said, I have given him a name which is above every name. Verse 9, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Above every what? Above every what? So anything that has name, that is defeating you. The name of Jesus is above that thing. That sickness, that disease. The name of Jesus is above it. And then verse 10, is says what? Verse 10. That at the name, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Every knee should bow. Every knee should bow. Of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth. Wherefore God has and, and uh, has exalted him. And I said in the tree service, listen, for you to understand it well, that's why I brought in this practical examples. I said, our president, there, his excellency. I said, when he was in school, he used the same name. And there are people that call him Nana, oh Nana, they joke with him and everything. And then when he was campaigning, he used the same name. Am I? And then when he won the election, now there is something about the name. He enters into this auditorium. All of us, we will rise up because the same name, but then there is something unique about the name. Now he's a president. And he has the whole Ghana backing this name. With all his power and sometimes the authority, if he's in his car or so forth, and he enters into um, the border of Lome, it ends there. Or so forth, did you get that one? The moment the nose of the car enters Lome, it ends there. But Jesus. He has the backing of the whole of heavenly host. His power and authority transcends everywhere. You didn't get it. That's why you are sitting there. I'm, I'm telling you this so that you understand why you need to engage the name of Jesus. Sometimes we do it casually because you yourself, you don't know why you do it. But when you get this understanding, any sickness that shows up, you know that when you mention the name of Jesus, the name transcends. It doesn't stop at Lome border. It doesn't stop at Nigeria's border. It transcends. So you can be in the U.S., and you can still mention the name of Jesus when any challenge face you. Because he has the backing of the what heavenly host at the mention of the name of Jesus. Every name bow. Everything that has name bow. Therefore cancer bow. They are saying you have cancer. The name of Jesus is above it. They said this migraine, there is nothing we can do about it. But I'm here to tell you that the name of Jesus, that migraine, bow to the name of Jesus. That situation that is confronting you, that has name. People of God, get it. When you have this understanding, no demon, no witch, no principalities, no powers, will show up and you'll be defeated. 
But because you don't know and you do it anyhow without any understanding, they come and then you sit and you compromise with them. But this morning, I am communicating to you. I'm challenging you that we carry a name. We carry a name. We carry a name. That is why we are called Christians. We are called Christians. That is why we are called Christians. Because we carry Christ. And everything that has name that is confronting you. Bow to the name of Jesus. Leave this room. Let your life never be the same. Because now you have that understanding. When you wake up and all of a sudden you realize that something is fighting you. Don't make yourself mobile, mobile. With the word plus the name of Jesus. You say to yourself, enough is enough. Enough is enough. I will not allow this situation. I will not allow it to kill me. I will not allow this situation to defeat me. Therefore, as I have the word, then quickly you remember the word. And then you go to the name of Jesus. You do it once and it's like nothing is working. You do it twice and it's like it's not working. You do it three times and it's like no way. But keep on. Keep on. Keep on. Because the name of Jesus, it works. That is why when Peter and John, is it Peter and John? When they go to the gate, the beautiful gate, the man that was sick, they look at him. And he looked at them, expecting that he was going to give them they were going, money, physical money. But then Peter and John looked at him and said, Silver and gold, we don't have. We don't have, oh, even if we have, we have something better than the silver and gold you are expecting. And so they said, in the name of Jesus, the moment they mentioned in the name of Jesus, quickly the authority, the power entered into the man. And the Bible says, she, he rose up and began to jump. Pa, 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 pa. This morning you are walking out of this place knowing what the name of Jesus can do. That is why he said we should go out there, preach in the name. Go out there, these days we have stopped. When was the last time you lay hand on somebody? Small headache, you said oh take it to the hospital. Small pain, you said take it to the hospital. Where is our Jesus? Where is our Jesus? When was the last time you experienced that issue and you laid hands on yourself? Commanding it in the name of Jesus to live. When was the last time? But I'm challenging you this morning. Live here knowing the power in the name of Jesus. And go, engage it. And it will work for you. When the enemy knows that, you know what you have. You understand what you are doing. He can't take anything away from you. He will come in one way. But in seven ways, he will flee away. Rise up as a child of God. Sickness and diseases have no power over you. They have no authority. They just come around to scare you small and to check your faith. But if you will arise, you will face each and every one of it. I pray that God will strengthen you. I pray that you receive this grace and do more for the kingdom. In the name of Jesus, he says, go out there, lay hands on the sick. Lay hands, lay hands. Cast every devil out. And then he said, in Proverbs 18 and verse 10, he says the name. Again, the name. The name is a strong You know, sometimes we read some of these scriptures and we take it for, we take it lightly. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, then we'll be good and that is it. But you get to a situation where you realize that indeed the name of the Lord is a strong tower and I better run into it. 
It says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous. It didn't say the unbelievers. He didn't say the unbelievers. It says the righteous. The name. The name. The name. It's a strong tower. The righteous run into it. And they are what? 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 This afternoon, run! Run! Run into the name. Whatever you're going through, run into the name. And you'll be what? You'll be safe. Run into the name. Kakaya Agbena. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Run into the name. Run into the name. Whose report do we believe? The doctors are saying it is impossible. Everything around you looks impossible. But run into the name, please. Run. Run into the name. It's a strong tower. It's a strong tower. The name is a, it's a strong tower. The righteous one run into it and they are saved. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Kado shtakaya. Ekala mahandi zosteketaya. Eshakaya. Randa da 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 da. Ekaya laba da 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 ya kaya. Eshtakaya. Ekaya laba pa. Rakata da pa. Eshtakaya da pa. Ekaya ya ya laba. Randa da da. Ekaya da pe. Shtapa ha. Ekaya ya 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 ya. Eshtakata. Rakaya ya. Eshtakapapa. In the name of Jesus. I have nine minutes together. Let's lift up our hand, our hands and do this hot prayer. Atmosphere of healing for you to receive your healing right now. Listen to me. In Matthew 15, 13, it says that that which God did not plant in you must be uprooted. <laughs> Anything that God did not plant and you know the funny thing, sometimes you are there, you are okay, you are fine. One, one time you, you just feel like pains all over you. You visit the hospital, then you hear bad news upon bad news. I don't want you to get to that stage. I don't want you to get to that stage. And may it never even happen to you. Because the enemy will plant it and you will not, 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 not realize it. Anything that he plants, he plants, he sows the seed. And by the time you realize, it grows up and turns into another thing. But we are not giving him any chance. We are not giving him any place. Anything that the enemy has planted inside of you, that is worrying you and it will worry you in the future. In the name of Jesus, I stand upon this exalted altar. Anything that the enemy has planted, I uproot it. Lift up your voice. Uproot it, uproot it, uproot it. In the name of Jesus, clap your hands, church. Clap, clap and pray. Clap and pray. Lift up your voice. Uproot it. Uproot it. Anything that God did not plant. Uproot it. Uproot it. Uproot it. In the name of Jesus. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. In the name of Jesus. The next hot prayer. Any spirit of infirmity. Lose your hold over my life, Jesus. over my family, over my children. Jesus. Listen to me. Bishop taught us about bloodline diseases. And truly, truly, it is there. He gave us examples. That in a family, by the time you realize, at a certain age, you realize that in the family, then somebody, everybody, asthma, asthma. In the family, then maybe pain at a particular side of your body, then it continues. So if I'm saying let's pray, we are not praying cosmetics. I know here at all. And you come to miracle service and see what goes on there, it will give you passion. So pray. 
And we are saying, everything that the enemy has fired into your life, into your family's life, the ones you know, the ones you have seen, the ones you have not seen, lift up your voice and begin to pray. Anything that the enemy has fired into our life, in the name of Jesus, die in Jesus' name, die in Jesus' name. is one of those things in our family in our family man knows you that is why God brought you into this church so as you receive the word you receive light and then you move on don't say that in our family sanity what's on the catch them so anything power delay your healing some of you that he, that disease that sickness has been there for a long time you want to lift up your voice, clap your hands, and say, Any power, delay my sickness, delay, uh, delay my healing, delay my healing, delay my healing, and blessings fall down and die in the name of Jesus. Any power, delay my healing right now in the name of Jesus. Fall down and die in the name of Jesus. of flesh and drinkers of blood you have fiber they drink your blood by the time you realize it turned into fiber eaters of flesh and drinkers of blood die in the name of Jesus Amen. I am not your candidate I am not your candidate. Eaters of flesh and drinkers of blood. Say it with all seriousness. Eaters, they come when you are asleep. That is why the Bible says when men slept. Then he came, he comes in and so tears. Don't sleep. So you are decreeing and declaring. Eaters of what? Flesh and drinkers of blood. They come to suck your blood. No, enough is enough. Enough is enough. I am not your candidate. Minus me. It ends today. Lift up your voice. <laughs> They leave the place free because they are they were all healed by Jesus. 
And this is a gathering unto him. So I am saying you are living here free. Amen. You are living here delivered. Amen. That sickness, that disease, that troubles you, it is over. Enough is enough. I, I said it in the tree service and you know, my eyes were filled with tears. Somebody wrote, I don't know whether Pastor um, Reverend Sami, you, you saw it on social media, the Victory Bible Church, we don't care. We, we only care about rich people. Where, where is it? Where from this team? We don't care. And I was telling them, you think we don't care? You have been with people, and this is, I mean, weeks upon weeks, the presiding bishop doesn't sleep. Because praying with people and the encounters he's been having, he doesn't sleep. Sometimes I wake up and he's lying down thinking how he can solve the problem of people. Some people, you think we don't care? You have been with people, they are not married. And being the head, being the pastor, overseeing them. You think we don't care? They are going through challenging times. They are going through difficult times. Some of the what they will eat. We try, we do it. School fees are being paid. Monies are being given. Do we have to come and stand and announce to every the whole world? You think we don't care? When you are going through pain and you are suffering, do you think we don't care? And we look, on, we look on, um, on it and then we do our own thing. The hours we spend in prayer, praying, interceding, standing in the gap for you. So that it shall be well with you. And every time presiding bishop makes it clear. He says that you will succeed and make it. Because God has brought you to him. And it is his duty to see that you make it and prosper and make it. You think we don't care? The fact that we don't talk to you, maybe one on one, doesn't mean we don't care. As ministers of God, we don't care. You, don't, you think we don't have passion when you are going through it? I look at some of our elderly women, they are coming to church. Some of them, they will come weekday, uh, women prayer meeting, church. You can see them, there is no strength. But they are, you look at them and sometimes you ask yourself, what can I do? why when I'm preaching sometimes it looks like I'm shouting too much because I'm preaching out of my everything for you to get it that this God that we have saved that has brought us where we are you God can also bring you there uh. some of you you came to meet us like this but we have been through it when I started I wasn't dressing like this I didn't have it all. But I stay close to the master. And I look up to many. I said, when I look at them, I said, God, if you have done it to this man of God, if you have done it for this man, a great woman of God, God at the right time, you will do it for me. So don't think that we don't care. And we look at you, go through it. The hours in prayer, thinking, especially the presiding bishop, I, I really feel for him. I really feel for him. It's not easy. Then you think we don't care. Leave this place with a burden in your heart that we care for you and we want the best for you. In the name of Jesus, may every desire of yours, may as you walk, I said something. I said, by the close of year 2022, when we call for testimonies, come and share your testimony. I've been worrying Bishop, presiding Bishop about a situation. And anytime we see that, I said, listen to me, Bishop. By the close. Why? Because I have come to understand the word and that name of Jesus. 
I said, by the end of 2022, this situation, it will change. Amen. And as I'm talking to you, it has changed. Amen. The year is not yet over, but that situation has changed. Amen. It's time for you to also have a change of story and a testimony. Walk out of this place, bless. Walk out of this place, favor. Walk out of this place, knowing that having the word plus the name of Jesus, you will be victorious, you will conquer any challenge that shows up. You will be victorious in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Oh, put your hands together again for the Lord. And let us appreciate the vessel that God has used. Hallelujah. Not only preaching the word, but bringing the word into action in our lives. God bless you, woman of God. In fact, first service, presiding bishop introduced her. And he said that men, we are like straight forward, but women, they, they make sure that what they have is just like a woman making you good soup. He, the woman will make sure that all the ingredients are put into it. So, so, so if, if the word works, then the word must be activated. We must live here with the testimony. And that is exactly what she has done. God bless you, woman of God. Hallelujah. Not only preaching that, oh, a good preacher. At the end of the day, if the preaching does not benefit you, but I know that she has declared that we are living here free. So you are free. God bless you, woman of God. Please take your seat. Quickly, we want to bring our tithes whilst you are preparing your offering. I have said that offering is not collection. It's a sacrifice. And for every altar, you put a sacrifice on it. So, bring your tithe whilst you prepare your offering as a sacrifice. And that is why even the offering is the last one if it is the last money that you will eat. I said it sometime and I was a little apologetic and Papa gave it to me. If it is the last money, the last meal that you will eat, because Bible says that when the prophet said that, you will not see the wind, but you just take the trenches. And it was when they gave out their last meal as an offering, then they saw the water coming. I was apologetic and he said, look at the scripture. Exactly what the scripture is. So sometimes the offering can be your last money. We have been there before. When we have given out everything and we started singing, oh sing, oh sing, oh praise the Lord. And I will sing that one to hope. Because we are giving out everything, we didn't have anything. And so we need to create the presence of God. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Oh, sing, oh, sing, oh, praise the Lord. And we will get home. And we are here. Hallelujah. It, it, it's, it's what you give it, the name you give it. She mentioned name. That will make it. Give it as a sacrifice. And God will fill your trenches for you. Amen. Give her the song. Bring your tithes and then let the basket go also as we take our offering. Mola, more power, more of you in my heart. More More of you in my heart, and 
I will worship you with all my heart. And I will worship you with all my soul. And I will worship you with all my heart. You are my You are my your word in the life of your people. Father, we have brought our sacrifice. Let it speak for us and bring a turn around in our financial lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. If today is your first time worshiping with us, we want to give you a befitting welcome. If today is your first time worshiping with us, can you rise up so that we can welcome you properly? If today is your first time worshiping with us. First service, we prayed for... Um... I don't think I need to talk much today. I know you are blessed in this auditorium today. Wow, what a word. Mama Dora has taken us to another level of healing, another level of deliverance, another level of blessing. God richly bless you, Lady Dora, for preaching such a wonderful word. I have known all my life that the word of God is so powerful. However, the angle from which the woman of God carried it today has made the understanding very, very clear. She said that by the word, healing comes. This is our month of healing and I believe this is the last sermon we are hearing for the month and it's been crowned beautifully. What a word. Lady Dora, we say God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for worshipping with us. I know your life will never be the same again. After hearing such a word, I pray that you put it to practice in Jesus' mighty name. I want to remind you one more time that the week is starting. Starting with Tuesday, we are going to have miracle service in the morning. Starting at 8 a.m. Come and be blessed. Come and be prayed for. Come and be transformed in the name of Jesus Christ. On, on Wednesday, we are having teaching service. And I will revert back to Monday and talk about reading my Bible again. Our Papa will be online on Monday, on Tuesday, and on Thursday at 9 p.m. each day. Join us online. Invite your friends to join us. Your life will never be the same again. The kind of things that Papa is teaching in reading my Bible again is amazing. I am happy to be here with you this morning because my life is transformed and blessed by the Word of God. Online with you today has been your online pastor, Reverend Dr. Samuel Kain. See you at the top. Thank you for listening. If you need to speak with any of our pastors for counseling, please call any of our pastoral helplines on 0263-177-957 or 0277-432-1111.
0243. You can also contact our pastoral team on these helplines 0244 170 657, 0244 672 036 or 0277 453 223 and 0263 137 957. May God richly bless you. Please join our online service on Sundays at 8 a.m. We encourage you to give as the Spirit leads. You can give using any of the following platforms. Koba, star 365 star 22 hash or MTN Mobile Money on 0595-849-567. You could also give via our international platform at give.vbcievents.com. Please visit our event page at www.vbcievent.com or download the VBCI app on Play Store or App Store. God richly bless you. VBCI, raising the foundations of many generations.